This is uh, episode 29 of the series about security podcast for March 4th, 2013, brought to you by the Center for Education and Research and Information Assurance and Security, or Sirius, at Purdue University. I'm Preston Wiley, and I'm joined by Keith Watson and Mike Hill today. Um, and Keith has the first and only article for uh, this podcast. So approximately, I believe it was two and a half weeks ago, uh, a company called Mandiant released a report called APT-1, Exposing One of China's Cyber Espionage Units. And this is a very detailed report. It's a, it's a 76-page PDF document available from their website. And it discusses a specific Chinese army unit, which they believe is part of ongoing attacks on U.S. interests. And the document kind of outlines what this unit is, why they think it's responsible for some of this activity. And prior to the release of this report, there were several reported attacks on the New York Times and the Washington Post and several other places. And Mandiant had been hired by the New York Times, for example, to come and investigate. And part of the release of the report is using information gathered not only from the New York Times and Washington Post, but other um, customers of Mandiant. And they're tying this information uh, through their research for customers back to a specific Army unit. This Army unit is known as the as 61398. Um, and it is in part of the, the Chinese Army that is responsible for um, various electronic-based attacks, I guess you could say. And so through their research and looking at information that they could gather from the internet, um, using mostly open source uh, sources of information, they were able to gather a certain amount of information about this particular unit, its location, the networks that it uses, uh, some pictures from outside of the building that they operate from, and a couple of agents associated uh, with carrying out activities uh, on behalf of this unit. And so the report is very detailed, and we've linked to not only the report, but also the New York Times and the Washington Post article, as well as another uh, blogger who potentially as a, as a competitor to Mandiant, talking about some issues with the report itself. So we want to point out that this report is very detailed. Um, it contains a lot of information that's not yet been verified. It may contain a lot of errors. We don't know that for sure. And it could be also considered advertising for the company services as well. Uh, the interesting thing about this paper, this report, is the detail provided in it and some of the justification and the reasoning behind some of the findings that they have. So it's a very interesting report um, for information security professionals that are looking at attacks on their organizations or trying to stop attacks on their organizations. This could be uh, a very useful information to go to management and try to uh, get some changes that are needed to kind of prevent this from happening or to recover from attacks that have already occurred. There's a bigger political issue here in that uh, China, of course, denies any of this being true. And they have uh, argued that they have laws on the books that prevent and discourage this type of, of attacks on foreign governments. However, if it is true that it's the Chinese military actually carrying these out, uh, what actually is going on is a little interesting. So I'm sure that uh, the diplomatic... Uh, diplomatically speaking, there, this is uh, an ongoing issue. I'm sure we'll see lots of interesting things um, reported in the news, you know, as more and more becomes available about this particular unit, if it's actually part of this attack, or maybe other interesting facts about what's going on. So it's a very long article, but uh, or, or report, but very detailed, and, and I thought we might want to talk a little bit about that today.
Yeah, it, it was a, a really good read. Uh, like you said, it is a long report. I believe it's 76 pages. Um, but it, it really does provide a lot of insight, I believe, for information security professionals. Um, you know, the one thing I, I tried to keep in mind as I was reading through it is the, the nature of Mandiant's business and whether, um, you know, whether some of this was strategic in that, you know, they could write the report up in such a way that it could draw in new business for them. Um, the, the report itself uh, focuses on uh, organizations that are, you know, commercial based. So, you know, it doesn't really highlight the fact that that's the kind of data they'd be able to analyze. So this is just, as you mentioned, Keith, one particular unit. Uh, but some of the things I found uh, really interesting throughout the report is just the way they worked their way into the networks. And um, a lot of it was uh, spear phishing, I believe, that uh, they, they, this unit, um, this, or, this unit that we're referring to as uh, APT1 or 61398, I think, um, they sought out individuals that uh, had very good English skills as well as programming skills. So a lot of their phishing attacks are, are very well crafted, and they used a number of techniques to entice people to, um, to click the links and you know, to get a, a gateway into the system. And uh, it's even interesting, at one point in the report, um, they, they show a, a diagram of where someone was suspicious and said, hey, you sent me this attachment, is it legit? And, and you, know, they respond, you know, they responded back and said, oh yeah, it's legit. And, and you know, they got in. And um, they talked about how this was really data gathering that this unit was performing. So they're pulling terabytes of data out of the organization and they would frequently come back to get further data. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot we can learn, learn from the report uh, as far as the techniques go. Um, one of the things I really liked was uh, they released what they, uh, they released information on three of the agents that they believe participate in this unit. And uh, the one I found the most interesting, I think, was referred to as Ugly Gorilla. His identity, um, they were talking about how they were able to use, um, uh, they have this uh, great firewall of China where they really limit, you know, getting on Facebook and Twitter. And in, the, in his case, um, like many hackers, he wanted to use these, these networks. So what he did was he did it the easiest way he could. He got on a compromised machine. And then he went and visited uh, his Facebook. And because of that, and, and because Mandiant could look at that traffic, they were able to kind of track down uh, who, was, who was performing, um, you know, this attack. So uh, I thought that was really very interesting, the, the fact that China locks it down so much that they would actually use the compromise machine over in, in the U.S. to... Uh, uh, to check things like that, so I think I think it's a good read. You know, I was able to go through it in about an hour, and I I would recommend it for everyone. Well, <clears throat> I think when you have that many people, you're going to have people who make mistakes, and 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 that's that's what happened there. The thing that I found interesting in the report was uh, they basically said out of the one, they had uh, 141 compromises that they're aware of, and the average length of time that they had access to the victim's network was 356 days with a maximum uh, length of time of four years and ten months and I think that's pretty astounding that they would have access to a network for that's about a year an entire year's worth of access and of stealing uh, basically proprietary information and doing who knows what, probably using and potentially using the network as a relay for other attacks or or things like that. That that's one of the that's one of the things that I find uh, found uh, the most interesting piece of data out of the maybe maybe not the 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 whole report, but definitely out of that section was uh, that uh, the the length of time that they actually had access to a victim's network. Yeah, they did have quite quite a bit of access once they got into a variety of these networks, and that is a good point. Um, in a lot of cases, it could be that the victim never noticed. In a lot of cases, it could be they couldn't get them out, 
if there were problems in, in securing their infrastructure and, and the, the organization used a variety of techniques to make sure they maintained a foothold on those systems, it would be very difficult to kick them out and keep them out. So that is that was an interesting part of the report there. Yeah, the, the report did document how uh, once they got a backdoor established, they worked to get multiple backdoors established throughout throughout that organization. Uh, I think for that very reason, so that they could keep a foothold uh, for for a long time. Yes, <clears throat> yes, and it, and it does say uh, that. Uh, while they they did have access for that long, and in uh, in a vast majority of the cases, they did continue to take data for that time. It wasn't just they got access; they took data once, and then the access access just stuck around for that long until they noticed. They actually got access and used that access during the time period in which they had it. It's not like a, a hacker breaks into your computer installs a back door, takes your data once, leaves the back door around just in case they happen to want to come back at a later time. They left the back door and they came back and they kept taking data in a vast majority of the cases. So what do you think the, uh, the fallout of this report will be? Um, can we expect any significant changes? As, a, as an IT security professional, should we be alarmed? Um, you know, this clearly indicates, this really wants to emphasize that this is cyber espionage. Um, is this alarming to us? Is this just um, something we already knew, but we, we get some more information on it. Um, what do you think the overall impact of Mandiant producing this report will be? Will it, will it change anything? I think that um, what's stated in this report is may have been well known in, in government circles for a while, but they're hesitant to talk about it. There's um, you know, China is considered a, um, at one time, I think it's still true, they are considered the most favored nation in trading status. And I don't think the U.S. government wants to upset that cart too much. And so coming right out and accusing the Chinese government of being actively involved in espionage within the United States is a diplomatic problem. From the commercial side, the non-governmental sector, this report will have an impact because now people can say, hey, look, this is worse than we thought it was. And they can use the report as, as information in their presentations to management and to their risk communities and say, look, here's more evidence that we believe these attacks are going on. They're coming from China and they're very sophisticated and we need to uh, step up our efforts to make sure that they're not getting into our systems. So I think that's hopefully one impact, if you will, of that is, is, is awareness and possibly taking action to make uh, infrastructures better prepared for this type of attack. Well, I'm not one to go out and just read the reports in general, but um, this report, which I think is a pretty standard uh, high profile report, unlike some of the other ones that may be out there, has the most detail that I've ever seen on uh, basically the the nature of attacks and the and the, and the process of, of attacks and uh, being being done and, and just how how things work when an attack happens. This is the this to me this is the most de detail that I've seen. I mean you know there's Symantec that puts out reports and, and a lot of other companies and, and for the most part they're just general. They talk about just statistics. You know this many this many. We have saw this much malware. They go into detail a little bit on uh, the the main pieces of malware that they've seen, but I, I think this goes m into much greater detail on exactly what's happening and what to look out for. And I think in that way, this report is is pretty valuable. Yeah, I agree. It is a it's a very detailed report, and it is is really nicely done. They. they obviously spent a great deal of time preparing this and uh, in every case where they uh, you know make their 
hypotheses that something, you know, has happened, they, they provide the evidence that they found, or at least a, a summary of the evidence that they were seeing to say this is why we believe this to be the case. Um, so, yeah, I was just curious what you guys had thought about what this would do to, to change things. I mean, for me, it was really eye-opening. Um, it seems like on these podcasts, we often talk about, you know, things that uh, we, we suspect a lot of things that are happening, but don't really have any hard proof. Um, I, I'd be hesitant to say this is hard, solid proof, but this certainly suggests that there's a lot of evidence that this is taking place, that they provide a number of examples uh, that make this very plausible. You know, what was interesting is the fact that um, they were able to find all of this evidence and track it back. And so if I have one hesitation in completely buying what's in it, it's the fact that the group that they have investigated seem to be not very careful in their in covering their tracks to prevent somebody from discovering who they were and their methods. So if I have one hesitation saying, oh yeah, these guys are, this is it, this is the smoking gun. It's that if these guys were really, really good, we would have no information about them. It would, they would have covered their tracks so well that it would be very, very nearly impossible to find out who they were, what they did, where they came from. And yet this report lays out a lot of information about this unit. Right. If you look at some other suspected uh, attack like Stuxnet, you know we have some details. Uh, I mean, we have the we have the 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 actual piece of malware, but as far as details on who wrote it and, uh, and and what exactly happened, it's all speculation, and there's really no proof at all on what exactly happened. And I think that's that's the that's I I, I agree. But but on the other hand, unlike Stuxnet, which was a kind of a one-off attack, I'd say against one you know organization. Uh, from what I understand from the report is this group, uh, whoever it may be, attacks hundreds of companies and they have hundreds of people doing it and, and you know, it's, it's hard to keep, uh, hun uh, keep from making a mistake when you're using hundreds of people and attacking hundreds of companies. And another thing along those lines is they've been gathering this data. Uh, they go back to 2006 in the report, so they've got many years of data um, to track it as well. So um, it's like you said, it's not a one-time thing. They are constantly going back into the networks and uh, gathering additional data. Um, and really, um, while they were able to show information on three of the, the players in it, uh, they weren't able to sh disclose a lot of information on on those three. Um, the, you know, they were able to, basically they were able to pick up on some patterns where uh, they mentioned, you know, they like to sign their malware a certain way um, to kind of take credit, but then they mentioned how that was on the earlier data and how over time uh, they were unable to follow them as well using that technique because they had changed their methods. So. Um, you know, I just wonder if we're seeing information on what would have been some of the rookies at the time or, you know, some of the early uh, younger coders and as they got more experience and more developed, um, they, they hide their tracks better. Um, and, and again, this is looking at the commercial, um, you know, stealing data from commercial entities. Uh, this doesn't discuss at all, um, you know, other entities that might be attacked. And I wonder how they prioritize what unit would work on uh, what type of data gathering as well. So, well, one of the detractors I, uh, art blog posts uh, basically mentioned the the confirmation bias may have had an impact on this report. And you know, they 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 in the report there's evidence, a lot of evidence that supports their hypothesis, but we don't know how much evidence they had that all didn't support their hypothesis that didn't make the report either so i mean that that's 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 a question that <clears throat> i'm not sure will be answered is what, how much evidence did they have to throw out and not use uh, because it didn't support the the their their belief that this was a, a government uh, run uh, group within china 
Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, we certainly don't have access to all of the information they had in order uh, that they used to make their determination. So yes, confirmation bias could have, could have be playing in a factor here. I think what's also interesting, I think this is kind of the first report we have of a of a, a government agency attacking other systems. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see other reports, maybe from Mandian or from other groups, looking at other other nations and their capabilities here. Certainly the US has been not so secretive about the fact that we have a cyber command division whose responsibility is supposed to be in developing defensive and offensive techniques in uh, the military units. We also have um, various uh, branches of military that also claim ownership of this particular thing, specifically the Air Force being one. Um, but then we also have the CIA, we also have the NSA. How long before we start seeing reports about our own government or potentially allies around the world and their various units involved in this type of activity? That will be interesting to see too. We don't have a lot of information on it other than what's been in a press release or website. So if somebody does any investigation of that, that would also be interesting. All right. Well, with that, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for watching and or listening. I'm Preston Wiley. Thanks to Mike Hill and Keith Watson. Uh, have a safe and secure day.